Hey everybody, Dan Schinder here on Drum Talk TV with another Drum Talk TV News Desk Report. Brought to you by Flow, by FairwindsManufacturing.com, 100% CBD pain relief cream, all natural. I gave Paul Quinn some, a music business attorney. How are you, Paul? Give that a whiff. I am doing perfect, thank you. And yeah, this makes me want to wear it everywhere. Yeah, yeah exactly. It smells great. I love it, and it, it really works. So for you musicians, guitar players, bass players, they got arthritic or drummers that get aches and pains, it absolutely works. I want to thank them for sponsoring our news desk. And I wanted to have you on because there's a lot of things that musicians need to know, and some of that they need to get professional advice from. So I thought, who else to bring on than Paul Quinn, music business attorney? And maybe you could talk about two things that every musician should really consider seeking out professional representation for rather than trying to figure it out from a YouTube video or a pamphlet. Well, I will absolutely tell you, do not figure it out from a YouTube video. Because, you know, the problem, listen, I'm not decrying the internet, it's marvelous. But it's hard to discern what is accurate and what is inaccurate unless you have a lot of knowledge going in. So, and I'll tell you, there is a ton of stuff on YouTube that is inaccurate. So, yes, there are clearly some things you have to do yourself and there are clearly some things you need to seek professional advice. I tell my clients when they come to me, never sign an agreement. In fact, sometimes I'll tell them, don't sign anything except an autograph without running it past an attorney. Because if you are signing a management agreement, an agency agreement, or a recording agreement, I promise you, those on the other side have attorneys who have reviewed the agreement. And like it or not, there are some things in agreements that are confusing. And generally speaking, lawyers are terrible writers. So when you read a paragraph that's 15 lines and it's one sentence with 22 subordinate clauses in it, um, even after 20 years of experience and three years of law school, sometimes I can't understand it either. So the goal, of course, in that case is to clarify it, make sure- Decipher, it right? There's a lot of deciphering. Decipher it and rewrite it so it makes sense. I do firmly believe every contract should be understandable by everybody. So. That brings clarity so it says what it means and means what it says. And the other thing is you're much less likely to breach your agreement if you understand what your obligations are. And you're much more likely to hold the other side to their obligations if you understand what they are. So never sign anything, never sign anything, except an autograph without running it by a lawyer. And in fact, one of my very first cases would actually undermine that piece of advice. Um, back when I was a very young lawyer, um, I had a lawsuit filed against a client of mine saying he had a record agreement. Um, I asked my client and he said I never signed an agreement with them. So they sent over the contract and I showed it to my client and I said, um, is that your signature? And he said, yeah, but I never signed that agreement. So the lawyer, thankfully, for the other side was an honest guy, and I asked to have the original contract examined by an expert. He agreed, and what we found was the contract had been printed over the top of his signature, which he had provided at a conference on an eight and, 11, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper as an autograph. So wow. there are, I know this is a shock, there are disreputable people out there. Thankfully, the, um, they're in the, that would do things like that, very few. One in one of those in my career. But, you know, they're out there, so pay attention. I actually, true story, I actually have two signatures. I have a signature that I use for any sort of legal document like that, and I have a signature for when I sign books and things like that. They're totally different. That makes sense, because no one can copy it. Yeah, right. if they copy and try and use it on something, I can track it, I can show, yeah, it's the same as 800 other books out there and stuff that I've done, you know, I can actually prove it. But you know, one thing that's interesting, if you're ever in a trial as it relates to um, the uh, uh, authenticity of a signature, it's one of the few areas of evidence you don't need an expert for. So, you know, experts can charge you anywhere from three to several thousand dollars an hour for their time. But with signatures, you are you can have the jury make up their own minds. So, you know, there are ways around it without costing you a fortune. Uh, you asked for two pieces of advice, though. And the other one is um, understanding your publishing. Because overwhelmingly, songwriters, I, I, and I won't name any names, but I have asked so many people, have you copyrighted your material? And they say, oh, yep, registered with ASCAP. I'm like, nothing to do with copyright. Yeah. Completely different. 
So, you know, you know, if you are a writer and you own your own publishing, you need to understand that you need to register your copyright and then you need to register with a performing rights society and you need to register your publishing company and cross-reference the publishing and the writing with that same company. Because if you don't, if they only have you as a writer and they don't have the publisher, they won't pay you anything at all. Until they can pay 100%, they won't pay 50 and overwhelmingly, people don't understand that. Is that one of the most common mistakes you see, Paul, at all levels of music industry artists? Yes, that is one of the most common questions I get, that I have songs, I have written, my performing rights society is not paying me any money. And I will say, well, have you registered your publishing company? And they say, well, I own my own publishing. Have you registered your publishing company with ASCAP? And they'll say no. Um, bear in mind, as a writer, you can only register with one. If you have a publisher that only does your songs, you only need to register with that same performing rights society as you're registered with as a writer. If your publishing company represents other people, then you need to form multiple publishing companies and, and join all those organizations. But yeah, that is the most common mistake that young musicians make. Wow, craziness. Craziness, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's not that complicated. I mean, the truth is, there are some things that require a legal background and legal knowledge. Interpreting a major label record contract, you need a lawyer to do that. Um, but publishing, a lot of it is just people don't understand what they're supposed to do. And Paul, give everybody the disclaimer for this advice. Here's my disclaimer for this advice. Um, I am an attorney licensed to practice law in the state of Florida and in the state of Missouri and in the federal courts of Missouri, Kansas, and Florida. So if you're not in one of those jurisdictions, this is not legal advice for your specific problem. That's a good, you know, you only know you're talking to a lawyer when they disclaim everything they tell you. But uh, so don't rely on it. But if you have a question, feel free, contact a lawyer or contact me. I'm in Tampa, Florida, Paul Quinn with one N. You'll find me on the internet. Happy to answer your questions. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on this Drum Talk TV News Desk Report brought to you by Flow, by Fairwinds Manufacturing. 100% CBD THC free pain reliever cream. It works outstandingly. Get some. Thanks, Flo. Thanks, Fairwinds. Thank you, Drum Talk TV fans.